So like many of you, we have been on a search for the perfect traveling rig, one that would allow us to take our e-bikes and our kayaks and our van. I'm not sure we found it, but we're a lot closer than we have ever been. Let me show you what this looks like. The kayaks sit in these Malone saddles and they're awesome. They are 10 foot, six inch kayaks and they work well on the water and they're easy for Lynn and I to load. Let me show you inside the trailer. In the trailer, we built a bike holder. It took a lot of experimenting, but we reused the clamps from the Fiamma. We made our own little uh, setup for that. And the bikes are in here. Paddle boards are up front. All the life vests, all the paddles. Everything we need to be able to hit the road and have fun is in here. Oh yeah, the griddle. <laughs> That's an important part, isn't it? Here, let me show you what we do with the griddle. We put this underbed storage, aluminum storage box from Tractor Supply where the Fiamma bike rack used to be. And it's pretty cool. It fits perfectly on there. And the griddle will fit inside of here if we're on a long trip. But if we're on a short trip, it'll fit on top of it. And I'll just strap it down. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good setup right now. We're really, really happy with it. We'll see how it goes. We're on our way to the lake. We're going fishing. And we're going to spend time with family at our local lake with our camper. Should be a fun, fun time. One other thing. Because we have so many family members coming, we're taking our third kayak with us, which is a bigger hurricane kayak. And look, it'll fit in between the beds. <laughs> we could get another two or three in here if we needed to. Packing's pretty easy when you have these e-bags. Here's one bag. I just need to pack the other two. It takes me literally three minutes to pack to go on a trip like this. Okay, I'm finished three bags by the way these e-bags are on our inside section of our amazon store if you want to grab some of these they make packing a lot easier don't they maggie are you ready to go <laughs> are you ready to go you ready to go you ready to go fishing you're gonna go fishing ready. you love it don't you so then it's just a matter of carrying the three bags out to the van and usually i would put them in the cabinet back there but this time this time i'm just going to lay them up here on the bed and i'll put them in there whenever we move the kayak one last check and we're almost ready to hit the road Turn some things to Amazon at Coles, and now we're going to head over to our campsite because we called them and Mindy says it's available. So we're heading there. Just in time for family to get here and to celebrate Father's Day. Good thing. Makes this old dad happy. with COVID-19 is campgrounds are really careful about how many people they let in. This local Corps of Engineer park that we're going to go to today, which is on our lake, they won't let you in unless you have a reservation, and they won't let you in until your site is empty. They won't let you in like they used to, where you could go in and enjoy the park and then check into your site after someone leaves. Now, you have to wait until the person is gone before you can even get through the gate. We've been calling since about 11. It's now 2.14. Checkout is at 3 o'clock, so we're going to bet that hopefully these guys are going to exit by 3, and we're going to head over there, hopefully in time for our family to come over. Everything's going well so far there on the trip. You having a good time so far, Mag? Having a good time? I am too. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. This is a little different for us 
and that Lynn is also bringing our uh, Outback over here since we're only like 15 miles away from home. So we'll have the car to be able to run errands and other things and set up the van in more of a camper mode as opposed to a van mode. So this is something else different as well. You have to go up front to check in and there's usually a line now to get into a park. We're just about set up in our site. Took us a lot longer than it normally does because, well, we've got people visiting with us, family. And we have, we have a wonderful site here. We brought one of the paddle boards with us and it's inflating right here. You recognize that pup dog? And I'll show you this before everybody gets here. Down here is a huge site. We've got chairs set up. We have our three kayaks already ready to go. Life vests, firewood, rocking chairs, and here's the view out of the rocking chairs. The van back up here. Dinner's just about ready to be served as soon as folks get here. This is gonna be fun, fun, fun. What a Father's Day. Aggie has the zoomies. <laughs> Down here. I'm free, boys. I'm free. Next thing I know is she's. Next thing we know is she's jumping into the lake basement. You're gonna love this. Slippery rock. Have fun, buddy. Well, I would turn around and face the other direction. There you go. There you go. Bob's your uncle. See you guys after breakfast. What? Good job. Just stand right up. Good job, Pam. Back here. Back here. I'm like, What's up? What's up? Hey, everybody. Yeah, we've had a fun day. <laughs> okay, so there's three gifts in here. I didn't get you any. Oh, you're not a father. That's mine. That's Emily. I mean, Kate, it's my iPad. Oh, how cute oh, is that? Look how cute that's that is. That's mine. <laughs> that was mine. Oh, a big diamond. Oh, look at that. Oh, honey, that's just precious. Real cool papu. <laughs> tired this morning but well rested huge storm it rolled through here last night family here Lynn trying for two days to get ready for the perfect day yesterday and it was this morning we're just walking around the campground doing a little bit of checking on p-mail and looking for future sites and meeting nice people beautiful day just look around Wow so our site is close to the water but it is a downhill trek to get the kayak down to the water. Are you going to go out on the paddleboard today? Let's see if you're all set up. Okay. 
Let me go out on the kayak and the paddle board. Okay, you got it? Gonna get back up into the cove? Yeah. Feels good on the water. It's nice and cool. cool. Got a nice breeze. Off we go. Maggie has resumed her position at the front of the boat. Going to get ready to fish. Maggie jumped off of my boat because she wanted to be on with Owen. So come on, come on. I know. Wait a minute. Don't get wrapped up in the line. Maybe she can catch a fish. She's happy now. First fish on the fly. <laughs> Go tell your friends, hey. A little bit better one this time. <laughs> Just a quick rain shower. <laughs> We're under the awning. Glad to have the awning. Back. I am too. <laughs> Fishing with Daddy. So I'm out here fishing again today. This has been a trip where I've just come out and I'm trying to learn to use a fly rod. Maggie and I have caught maybe five or six so far today. We've been out here about 30 minutes. Okay, we got us one our first bass on the fly rod. He's jumped a couple of times and he got on. My knot tying skills did not hold that gimmick. Got us about a pound and a half or two pound bass, but lost him. Dang. First little bass on the fly rod. That's pretty cool. You're neat. Thanks, buddy, for coming in here and making my day. That was cool. Let him go now. goal for today is to paddle down to the dam, that big mountain or hill at the end of the lake. I'm going to hug the sides of the lake and see if I can make it down there with Maggie and tow. Let's see if I do it. church bells along with boat motors it's a beautiful day on the lake so we're taking a little break from our paddle Maggie can get in the water cool herself off get a couple of drinks of water that feel good baby that feel good so you can see way over there on that point is the campground and we're over to the side of it a little bit so that's how far we've come. We've got a little ways to go. So we made it to the dam area. It took us about 45 minutes of slow paddling, and of course we stopped one time. 
crossing the little lake. What do you think, Maggie? Are you having fun? Are you having fun? Are you having fun coming up with mommy today? There's my Maggie voice. I need to quit doing that. It's kind of annoying. Hey, sweetheart. So here's our campsite from the water. And right over here to the left is where we have to put in our kayaks. And you can see it's a lot of red mud. So we got a lot of red mud inside the boat. And it's really, really slick. So it's not the ideal place to launch a boat. But you can see it's stuck way up in the woods. What are you doing over there? Looking at the weather. What's it saying? Well, it says it's not going to storm, but it's mm -hmm. like it could. You could come take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go walk seven miles. No, I don't want to walk seven miles. Maybe you go check out the trails? Yeah. Want to do that? Sure. Okay. Sounds like a great thing to do. All right, let's go. Mm -hmm. hiking and mountain biking trails. So we wanted to check it out to see if we thought we could bring our bikes down through here. But nice shady trail so far. Of course we just got on it, so. Skaters are so bad through here, different places that we're having to turn around because we can't stand it. Maggie's got something in her paw, and every time she stops the mosquitoes attack. I might bought this hat, but it makes a really good mosquito swat. <laughs> Not the best trail to go on in the middle of summer and I think it's got quite, quite a few mosquitoes. But we made it six miles. We did not make it six that miles. That sign back there said we'd gone six miles. I don't think that was talking about us. Oh. I uh, guess we didn't start at zero. No, we didn't start at zero. We started at seven. Oh, we started at seven? Yeah. Three a mile. And then back now. Yeah. No. I don't think so. I don't think so either. It's a beautiful place though. It's it really, is. really pretty. It would be there. really pretty if it wasn't for all the bugs. We're back, man. We're back. I got Nine. Do something. For a season where everything That's pretty graceful there. <laughs> so the sounds of grandchildren and a grandmother. It's a precious sound. <laughs> on one side of me, I can hear Emily jumping in the water and standing up with her dad. And on this side, I can hear Abby and Carrie coming in with their grandmother. And they're laughing and cutting up. And that's the way family trips should be right there. Fun times on the water. 
another fun thing that the van has actually provided for us and that new trailer it let us bring every one of these toys over here and we had so many that everybody got to do something fun that's really cool abby taking a nap she's holding on to my boat why is she doing that so they can, we can get back there's some control okay all i heard was i just heard you got laughing Youngest grandchild. This is Sam. So that was a wonderful trip that we had to the lake with our family. And to celebrate with just the two of us here at home, I put on buttons. I don't always do that. I'm dressing up, baby. I'm ready for the prom. We're going to reverse sear a big ribeye today on the griddle. Let's get started. I've got it up to temperature and now I'm just going to sit it on the rack and we'll let it get most of the cooking will get will happen under the dome. You won't be able to see it. So the toppings for our ribeye will be butter and garlic and I'm going to roast the garlic on the griddle right now. So it's time to turn the steak over. And you'll notice in the back corner we put the garlic back there because it just can't stand being on the hottest part of the grill. So we've reached about 125 degrees on the inside of this steak. So now it's time to put a little oil down on the griddle. And now we're going to drop the steak on there and do the reverse part of the sear. Boy, I like the sound of that. This doesn't take very long on a griddle. Now we've got that nice caramelization on the back side. Now the front side's getting some love for this. Take about this much real butter. We're just going to set him down in the middle of that. To help this butter to uh, melt, we're going to cover it back up with the little dome. If you look back here, the garlic is getting lots of love back in the back corner. Got some seasoning on some zucchini and squash. Put a little bit more oil down. And then these are going to go down. And now we're just going to press the garlic down now this is how the magic happens time to take the steak off it is removing the steak we're going to let him rest for a while finish up the veggies okay. veggies are coming off we'll let the steak rest for about two more minutes and then we'll cut into it and see if it's a medium rare to medium, which is about perfect for us. We really appreciate you guys putting up with us showing you so much of what went on during Father's Day week for us. As you can tell, we're still loving the van. It's a really good base camp for things like meeting at the lake with your family. Now we're going to have the moment of truth here, and we're going to cut into our steak. This is a big steak, sweetheart. We're hoping to see kind of pink on the inside. There you go. The way we like it. Maybe not medium rare, but... Somewhere between medium rare and medium. Yeah. That's a home run for us. Give me a piece of this garlic. <laughs> mm. 
Man, happy Father's Day to me. You can taste the butter, you can taste the garlic, and the Montreal steak seasoning that we put on there. That is the stuff, that's the stuff. Let me get in here and get me one of these pieces of squash. I love squash. Look how good that looks. Man, sweet and crispy. That's the stuff there. Can't go wrong. You know, I've got a grill out there and I've got a grill in the van, but we griddled steaks and they may be the best steaks we've ever had. Thanks for being around the griddle with us. Next week, we'll show you another recipe. q and I'm gonna show you how I clean up the mess from creating a steak like this. A lot of people complain that keeping a griddle clean is a really hard thing to do. And I think I know the easiest way for me to, to actually get it clean. If you do it this way, it's not that much of a problem. So let me show you what I do. The first step is to light the griddle and get it back up to temperature. Now we're gonna take this paper towel and we're gonna just roll around the outside, picking up all the, the butter and grease. And the goal is to try to get as much of the excess off of this as you can. I keep a trash can right beside of me. So I'm gonna drop that in the trash can. The next step is we're gonna pour some clean water onto the griddle. And the trick is you wanna move the water north to south and then east to west across the griddle. Picking up the grease as you go. And then we're gonna rake it all into the grease trap. You don't wanna let it boil away with everything that just came off the griddle right now. You're gonna just get as much of this into the grease trap as you can. One more paper towel, throw that down. And we're gonna get rid of this extra water that's left on there. Now we're gonna repeat that process. And you wanna get some water splashed back up in each one of the corners, just to get everything out of there. And now, you go going side to side again. Get everything good and clean. You can see the water now is actually pretty clean. And now we're just gonna bring it down Take it to the grease trap. One more wad of paper towels, wet that, and this is your final wipe. Flip that over. This is ready for some oil. This is the cheapest alternative I've found for putting this on a hot griddle. It's the Crisco Grill Master vegetable oil, high temperature vegetable oil. And I just spray it on and make a little box, a little crisscross. Take one more paper towel, throw it down, reach over, turn the griddle off. Make sure you got a good even coating of oil on the griddle. Get some on the sides. Clean the temperature knob. Always go clockwise because it doesn't turn itself back on. Clean off the trap here. That's how I keep my griddle perfect for the next cook. It's ready for me to throw a little oil on right before I cook something else. Thanks for all the questions. We'll see you next week with another Q&A. So how was your steak? Oh man, <laughs> that was the best steak I've ever had. And I thought that grilling a steak was the way to go, but that is by far one of my favorite steaks. Real butter makes a difference too. Real butter, garlic, it's just, it worked out all, really worked out well. You did a great job, <laughs> thanks. I have to totally agree. The real butter, I could have put more butter on it and been happy, but I, Lynn actually made me cut what I was gonna put on it in half. And I think she was right. We had the perfect temperature and I'm not sure I even need my grill anymore. Well, the last thing we were holding out on was grilling steaks because there's nothing like the wood-fired taste of a steak.
until you've had butter and garlic ribeyes on the griddle, reverse seared. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what we're gonna cook next week on the griddle. I'm just telling you, unless we make another steak like that, <laughs> it won't be as good as the meal we had this week. But it and might be steak. <laughs> <laughs> and now we'll show you the process of us tearing down camp right before we left the lake to come back here to our home. Things are a lot different today in this world of COVID that we're living in. Our governor just put us under a mandate that you must wear a mask everywhere you go in public. And it's gonna be at least July 17th before things start to open up again. And maybe that's a good thing. We're not sure we're gonna bring you a video every week, but we'll do our best to try. Just remember, we care about you. We want you to be safe and we're glad you're part of our family. Until we see you and park beside of you somewhere down the road, Maggie says, happy tales. Heading back to what used to be home, passing by those little towns I know so well, stopping for gas and then I'm behind the wheel again. Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every bend holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving to get away So it's raining a little bit So I'll quickly show you how these are mounted to the top of the trailer And without these, this time this trip could never have happened. So here, here's, where the, here's what it looks like. We bought van roof racks on Amazon and I'll share the link with you so you can get the same ones if you end up with this trailer or something like it. We bought Malone saddles for kayaks and all we do is slide each one of them on, cinch down the little strap that came with it. I cut the strap to be the length it needed to be so we wouldn't have to wrestle with that. Same in the front. They ride with a little bit of the bow over the front and the back is just fine. It's been a, been a great addition. Maybe five to 10 minutes to put them on and we'll get better as time goes on.